Hey, it's Carly with Launch Code. We're back in our coding events application, and in this video, we are going to create what we refer to as our as a data layer for our application. So, if you recall in previous videos, um, we've stored our events list within, or we've housed um, the collection of event data within. Uh, our controller class, but we do want to continue the steps that we've been uh, taking towards further separating out data and data management from the controller class and into its own um, uh, its own environment, essentially. So what that means down the road is that um, we'll be populating our application with data coming from a database. In the meantime, um, we will take a, a further kind of best practice management setup. Um, and create a class to better handle this collection of events. Uh, so what that looks like right now is we are going to create a new folder. Um, so the other components that we've created so far have, uh, you know, these folders have been have come to us via the kind of scaffolding of the MVC app. Um, but we're going to add our own folder called data, and we're going to add a class inside of data. called event data, uh, just a plain C-sharp class, similar to our event model itself. Um, and what we want event data to do is a couple of things. Really, it's going to take care of um, the management of that events collection um, that currently resides within event controller. And it's actually going to do the, it's going to hold the collection itself. So the first thing, so we're just going to like kind of stub out some of these tasks before we dive into it. So this class is going to be a bit bigger than the model itself. Um, the first thing we wanted to do is store events. Um, and then we want to be able to interact with that um, event collection. So we want to be able to add events. We have been doing quite prolifically so far. Um, we want to be able to retrieve the events. It would be nice if we could also retrieve, oh, I think I spelled that wrong. It doesn't really matter because it's in the comments, but um, we want to retrieve a single event. I think that's right. I always get confused with the I's and the E's. Um, and lastly, we'll add another method for this data management um, to be able to remove an event from a collection. Uh, we haven't really added this functionality in any shape or, you know, in any uh, version of this application so far, but we will be um, adding that functionality in shortly, and it'll help to, to have that method in this, um, in this class as well. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of, you know, what we want um, this class to accomplish and do for our application environment, um, the first thing we want to do is just kind of recreate this events list or events collection that we've created in um, in a number of places. Um, the list itself can be, or excuse me, the collection itself can be static um, because we uh, won't be creating any instances of um, of event data. We're just going to be dealing with the class itself. Um, and we'll keep it private because we want the collection to, we want the collection to be as protected from outside influence as we can. Um, and I'll talk more about that as we, as we kind of flesh out the rest of these methods. Um, so this, it's going to be a dictionary again. So in the past we've had this list in the controller of events be a, a dictionary and the list and um, we've gone back and forth a number of times so we're going back to a dictionary it's going to be a key value pair of um, integer type and event object and we'll just call it events as we have before um, new dictionary it's going to be empty to start so the first of these um, data management methods that we're implementing within the class is going to be um, the add method. We can make this, we do want to make this method public because we want, uh, we want um, to interact with the dictionary via these management methods. So we want to interact, interact with the collection um, outside of the class, but keep the class protected. Uh, this uh, this method is going to take one argument, which will just be a new event. So essentially, we just want to add that new event to the collection each time a new event is created. 
Um, and we're just going to be mirroring the dictionary classes or a dictionary objects uh, add method itself. So we'll just say events.add um, that the key in this scenario is going to be new events ID. And the corresponding value will be the event itself. Okay, so um, in order to retrieve uh, the whole list, so in order to access the list outside of the class, we'll create another public method. This one uh, will return something. It's actually gonna, we're gonna have it return an enumerable. So this is an example of one of those interfaces that we talked about a couple of lessons ago. Um, and we'll say, we'll call this event get all. Um, and it doesn't necessarily, oops, we have to put a, a type inside of the enumerable. It's gonna be a, a list of events or a collection of events. And we want to return events. So here what we're doing, what we wanna do is when we, when we query this collection of events for all of the information what we want returned are the events themselves not the list uh, with the ids attached as keys so we just want to use um, the key value structure and get the values so that's why we're asking for event.values the the reason that we're returning well one reason to return um, this i enumerable type rather than uh, rather than type of events um, has to do with this collection that comes from calling dot values on a dictionary. Um, so uh, if you call dot values on a dictionary, you're not necessarily going to be returning a list of our own custom or a collection of our own custom events. Um, rather, uh, what we're returning is a, a different data type that um, that implements this this interface. So for simplicity's sake and for being able to take advantage of the most generic type that we can, we'll return I enumerable. Okay, now to retrieve a single event. So say we wanna um, query or we wanna dig into this collection that we've created and we wanna get only a single event, how would we do that? Well, here's really where we, um, you know, the reason that we have this, uh, this key value set up here. So to get a single event, we are going to return an event itself. Um, and we'll call this method get by ID. Um, and it's going to have one argument, which is an ID itself. So we want to say, hey, given this integer, um, look into this collection and ask to return or you know get give me back any event object that has that particular integer as its as its ID. And we can just use the key itself. Oops, no curly brackets. We can just use the key itself to return um, that event object value. I made this capital. Okay, and the last one again, we haven't added this functionality into our. Um, application yet but we will we know that it's coming down the horizon so we will add the functionality to manipulate our collection here keep my default is to make the ID capital uh, so this remove event will basically act similar to the to the add um, add method. We're just mirroring what the dictionary the dictionary's um, the dictionary's method itself. Okay, so um, that's that's what our event data class will look like. Um, this is kind of a lot of code for not a lot of testing yet. Um, really the you know the goal of, of creating this class is to um, as, as I've said a number of times now is to remove um, the event collection storage outside to remove that um, 
from where it currently lives inside of the events controller. So since that's our goal, we can just as easily remove this. Um, okay, so no surprise here. Um, removing that collection does generate a couple of compiler errors. So our controller class no longer recognizes um, anything that's called events, an object or a, a collection of any type, um, because we have we have indeed we still have our events collection, um, but it exists within a, a different class and a in a different directory. Um, and recall that we we made that events list itself private. We don't want it to be accessed here. But instead, what we want to do is we want to just take advantage of the class definition itself and use those static methods. So instead of uh, adding a list directly within controller, we're going to say, hey, use this class called event data and use one of those methods that we used, which is capital. And we want to say um, we're going to get that collection via the get all method that we wrote. And we're going to have to import this guy um, because that class, again, is within a different data, excuse me, a different namespace. Um, so that's how we'll be able to display all of our, our event information. Um, let's see, we have one more. So once we've once we uh, you know submit that form to create a new event instead of um, instead of adding to the list directly, we're gonna say event data use that new method that we've also called add. Um, which again takes only one argument, but via that argument we'll extract the new events ID in order to create a new event object. Um, okay, so that's it. We don't uh, we don't need to update anything within our views um, to test this out. Uh, another kind of um, just straight refactoring refactoring change. Uh, you know this happens sometimes. Sometimes I have to. Um, quit my Visual Studio. Hang on one second. Okay, so sorry about that. Sometimes um, my Visual Studio can be a bit buggy and will kind of crash on me if I... Um, actually, I haven't quite recognized the pattern of when it happens, but it happens occasionally. Uh, okay, so just a kind of reset. So we've we've just made these changes to use this data layer within our application. Let's go ahead and test out the application running in the browser um, to make sure that our functionality stays the same. So we'd expect um, really everything on this front end on the client side will operate the same. Uh, any red flags would be if we you know, attempt to add an event and we're not able to see the same functionality that we did uh, at the end of last video. So we have an event, uh, let's see, we have the Queer Text Symposium. which was an event that Launch Code's um, Code with Pride meetup just put on. Virtual panel and breakout rooms. Okay, so so far so good. We are still able to create an event. Uh, it appears to have a unique ID. Let's see if we can add another guy. Um, we'll say strange loop, another old favorite. And we go down. And this guy, well, I have a, um, maybe that's related to why my Visual Studio kind of crashed on me, so I'll deal with that, um, in a minute, but, uh, we are able to confirm that we can create another event. It has a unique ID. So everything running wise on the application side looks precisely like it did before. Um, so, so what we've done here might um, kind of on the surface appear like quite a bit of refactoring on the back end um, within the code base itself for not a whole lot of payoff um, inside of the, or not a whole lot of um, visual payoff in the running application on the front end um, dealing with the, the browser interaction. Uh, but what really what we have done is is well a we've um, we've worked towards better encapsulating our data and our data um, handling so 
we uh, removed that event collection from the controller class and put it not only into its own class, but also into um, a private property of that class. So it's really, it's much more protected now from kind of any erroneous um, manipulation. So it's less likely that, that we'll encounter a scenario where we can um, inadvertently do something to, to that list of events that we didn't want to do. Uh, so if, if at any point in your application development um, you, you recognize an opportunity for encapsulation, it's, it's generally going to be a good idea, a good object-oriented principle, as we've talked about in the class before. Um, but really, honestly, the main goal of what we've done here is to um, kind of set ourselves up to take another step forward towards um, towards wiring up our, this MVC application to use a database to actually populate the application with information.